It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Tees it up, and a save is made by Bobrovsky. Nelson, Barzell with the open net, and he scores! Hi, and welcome to the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gil Martin. I'm an Islanders columnist and historian. And I wrote the book Ice Wars, which covers the complete history of the Islanders' rivalry with the Rangers from 1972 to the modern era. All right, everybody, welcome to the Friday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. And I want to thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Islanders is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, at Locked On. On Islanders. We have got a lot to talk about on today's show. The players were back on the ice. Training camp is here. It is open and and it is an exciting time of year, especially for a team like the Islanders who are truly expected to make another long playoff run. This Islanders team is looking like a contender And that means a lot of anticipation to see if the Islanders can take that final step and reach the Stanley Cup final for the first time since 1984. And we at Locked On Islanders will be with you every step of the way. We have got a lot to talk about since training camp has opened up. We have, uh, you know, news from training camp, including some of the defense pairings on the first day, which I think was interesting to see. And uh, we also have the one Islanders player who will not be participating in training camp. And we'll tell you why and really, you know, what the situation is with that, plus a whole lot more. We've got our Islanders birthday of the day. And look, guess what? Sunday, it is something that I am certainly looking forward to as the Islanders will be back on the ice against another team over the weekend, and of course, we'll have all of that on Monday's show and a whole lot more. If there's something Islanders-related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, a topic that you'd like us to talk about, feel free to email the show. The email address, as always, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter, and we'll keep you up to date on all the latest news from training camp, preseason games, and anything else that's New York Islanders until the regular season gets underway in about three and a half weeks. So, exciting time, to say the least, and I am looking very much forward to discussing a lot of things. Uh, Let's get started with the one player who is not attending training camp with the Islanders. And this news came out yesterday when the Islanders organization basically handed out the training camp roster to members of the media and you start looking over the roster and you realize Everybody who you expected to be on that roster is there except for one player. And you do a little process of elimination, you do a little research on social media, and you realize that the one player who is not in training camp is defenseman Bodie Wild, who essentially is not going to be in training camp because the Islanders' team policy is that everybody has to be vaccinated in order to play. And that's, it doesn't just, not just talking about players. We're talking about coaches. We're talking about the training staff. Everybody needs to be vaccinated against COVID-19 in order to play. And apparently 
Bodie Wilde has said that, you know, he doesn't want to be vaccinated against COVID-19. And again, uh, I don't want to get political here. That's not what I'm looking to do. But uh, from an employer perspective, from the perspective of the New York Islanders, from the perspective of the National Hockey League, it does make sense to require that your employees are going to work at a job like playing hockey where social distancing is realistically impossible, where you're always going to be in close contact, not just with your teammates, but with referees, with training staff, with opposing players and coaches from both teams. It is impossible to play hockey and travel and do the things that professional NHL players do uh, and, and, and maintain social distancing. So, look, Wild has spent the last two years with the Sound Tigers, now the Bridgeport Islanders. He's played 42 games over that two-year period, three goals, five assists. Again, that's sort of a a two-year combined statistics. And and look, the last two years for the AHL has been very difficult because you're talking about one season that was cut off in the middle, one season that was only, what was it, 24 games last year, and, and, and the Bridgeport Sound Tigers only played two teams, you know, Providence Bruins, Hartford Wolfpack, and that was it for the whole season. So, you know, the situation has not been normal. But at the end of the day, the 21-year-old made a decision. And look, you know, he has to do what's good for him, but the Islanders also have to do what's best for the organization. And that means protecting as many people who work for the organization as possible, and that means that they need to require vaccination. So the the basic thing is Lou Lamorello basically said that it's Wild's choice not to get the vaccine. He has every right to do that, and Lou Lamorello has every right to say that you're free not to do that, but we're not going to jeopardize the health of the other players on the roster and the opponents, and there's a lot of money and a lot of things at stake here. So at the end of the day, that's the decision that Lou Lamorello, who is a, you know, team-oriented, team-first kind of a GM, uh, that's his policy. So uh, as of right now, the report is that the Islanders are looking for a place in Europe where Bodie Wild can play. And is this going to hurt his development? Is this going to hurt his standing within the organization? I would have to say, yeah, it it, it probably is. And, you know, for some people, is this controversial? Yeah, it it certainly is. And, you know, again, you're free to decline the vaccine, but there are consequences to that. And, you know, you're not free to put other people in danger. So it's a tough decision, and that's what the Islanders' policy is. And for Bodie Wild, he will not be in training camp. He will not be playing for the Islanders, and he will not be playing for Bridgeport either because that is the Islanders' organizational policy. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that, see where in Europe, if anywhere, he is able to play and how he does this season and beyond as the fallout from the COVID-19 situation continues to affect, obviously, not only the NHL and the world of hockey, but our country uh, in general. We have got a lot more to talk about. We'll talk about some of the defense pairings and some of the news, some of the players who sat out practice on the first day, Thursday of practice at Islanders training camp. We'll Think ahead a little bit to the game against the Rangers. All that and a whole lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We have got a lot to talk about on today's show. And this show is brought to you by your friends at 
Bet Online. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for the start of another football season. And as always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this year. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use the promo code NFL100. From football, basketball, boxing, hockey, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. That's Bet Online, your online sports book experts. Today's episode is also brought to you by DirecTV Stream. Does this sound familiar? You got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, and you're watching sports highlights on your phone while you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle, and it's a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. And it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again, and the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. So the Islanders were out there on the ice. And here are some of the things we saw. First off, let's talk about the defense pairings. We know that Adam Pellick and Ryan Pulak are going to be the top pair. That's the number one pair. And yes, you know, Barry Trotz will split them up occasionally and move them around. But primarily, that's your number one pair. And then we don't know who the second and third pairing is going to be. But training camp started yesterday. You start to get an idea. And the first day of training camp, who is the pairing after Pelic and Pulak? Zidane Chara and Noah Dobson. Now, you could say that's the second pairing. You could say that's the third pairing. And look, that may even change over the course of the season, so it's way too early to tell. But this is what I love about it. You want Noah Dobson to learn more about the little subtle things that go into making a successful NHL defenseman. I don't know how many better people there are to learn from than Zidane Chara, 44 years old. Look at the guys who have already learned from Chara over the course of his career. Dougie Hamilton, Brandon Carlo, Charlie McAvoy, all of these guys played with Zidane Chara and learned from him. And the encouraging thing at training camp that I really liked seeing was that even when they weren't skating and drills and and, and scrimmaging or whatever, you saw Dobson standing next to Chara, asking him questions and trying to get more information about what do I do? How do I go about this? Uh, And and that's exactly what you want to see. And yeah, Zidane Chara plays a very different style of hockey than Noah Dobson. Noah Dobson is not going to learn how to rush the puck up the ice by watching Zidane Chara. He's not going to learn how to make fancy plays and do spinoramas. That's not it. But one of the things that young defensemen need to learn, and it takes time, when do I pinch and when do I stay back? What gambles are worth taking? Where do I go when this happens? If the puck goes here, and my partner goes here, where do I have to go? Well, there are few players better right now in the NHL to learn things like that from than Zidane Chara. And 
look, you've got Barry Trotz, who is an expert in defensive style hockey. And now you've got Zdeno Chara, who can really teach Noah Dobson a lot about how to take his game as an NHL defenseman to the next level. So I love this idea. Then you would have Andy Green and Scotty Mayfield as as the next pair, most likely. To me, I, I think this is the best way to go about it in order to maximize the talent that your team has on the blue line. That, to me, is what I would like to see. Now, it, look, it may not work out the way you want it to work out. It may These two may not have any chemistry together at the end of the day. But I think it's where you want to start, and I think it's where I would like things to end up when the season gets underway, if it works. A couple of players also, well, three to be exact, not on the ice for the first day of practice. They were Matt Martin, and we talked about the fact that the Islanders would probably bring Matty Martz along slowly over the course of training camp. Uh, Lou Lamorello just a, a day ago and in his opening of training camp press conference that was back on Wednesday, indicated that Matt Martin had surgery to remove a bone spur and that they were going to hold him out of contact. So look, I would rather have Matt Martin miss a little time in training camp than have him miss games in October, November when they start to count, or more importantly, March, April, May when they really, really matter, and hopefully even June, Islander fans. So Matt Martin not on the ice, Samuel Bulldog not on the ice, no word as to why, and then the other player not on the ice, Simeon Varlamov, according to Barry Trotz, uh, Varlamov, just a little soreness, and they're being very cautious with him for Bulldog. Again, also, a little soreness from skating with his teammates last week, and you know, they're saying it's nothing to worry about, not a major injury or something that should be a long-term problem. But I like the idea of this team being more cautious with players. You know, Varlamov is your starting goalie. Martin is part of the identity line. Bulldog is one of your top defensive prospects. I don't mind them missing a day or two or five in late September when... You know, you're just trying to get into shape and and, and get acclimated with your teammates and what have you. I, I don't mind them missing things then than, uh, rather than missing them uh, later on. As far as some of the line combinations, uh, Zach Parise, uh, who, again, a free agent signing, he was out there on a line with J.G. Pajot, and Dimitro Timoshov for most of the first day of practice. And again, these lines are and defense pairings are anything but final. But to me, the idea that Pajot and Parise were on the same line indicates that that is likely where they envision Zach Parise in this lineup. On the third line with J.G. Pajot, and then... You know, whether you have Palmieri or Wallstrom as the favorite to plug in there and the other one plugs in on the first line, that remains to be seen. As far as the uh, top line, if you want to call it that, Matt Barzal on the ice, Anders Lee back out on the ice, and with them, Anatoly Golishov. So that was the trio again. Way too early and, and nothing final, but just gives you an idea of where the Islanders are preliminarily thinking. And uh, Anders Lee basically said he's ready to go after practice and uh, doesn't seem to be feeling any ill effects of the injury. And Islander fans, that is very, very good news for the Islanders. So we are very happy. Uh, thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are still going to talk about our Islanders birthday of the day. We're going to go back to the mid to late 80s for this one. A, a, a player who contributed a bit to the Islanders' success during 
that time. Uh, and of course, we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming preseason opener against the New York Rangers. So lots more to get to right here on the Locked On Islanders podcast. This show is brought to you by your friends at Built Bar. Do you know why Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? Well, there really is something for everyone. It's the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. And if you talk to a Built Bar fan, they really are passionate about their favorites. And here, listen to these flavors and you'll understand why. Coconut, mint brownie, orange, German chocolate, cookies and cream, salted caramel. That's my favorite because... You got the sweet and the salty combined. It's a great combination. And if you haven't tried all the flavors, you can order a mixed box. They'll give you two of each of the nine flavors so you can figure out which ones you like the best. And not only are Built Bars the best tasting protein bar, they're healthy as well. Check out this information. Each bar has 17 to 18 grams of protein, only 130 to 180 calories, just four or five grams of sugar and four or five grams of of net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. And Built Bar is the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. Right now, go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. David Harrison here, the Locked on Washington football team podcast, celebrating with you a 21 grain salute to a less boring sandwich. Thanks to Dave's killer bread. I don't know about you guys, but when I eat pizza, I eat it for the toppings, not the crust. And when I eat a sandwich, it's for what's inside the bread, not for the bread. But when I throw a sandwich on 21 whole grains and seeds, thin sliced bread from Dave's Killer Bread, it is the epitome of addition by subtraction. That thin sliced bread lets me focus on what's inside the sandwich, but also adds to the sandwich with killer taste, killer texture, killer nutrition, a subtle sweetness, and a seed coated crust. Dave's Killer Bread is America's number one organic bread bread for a reason it tastes so stinking good dave's killer bread is made with the highest quality organic and non-gmo ingredients and is power packed with whole grains fiber and protein visit daveskillerbread.com to learn more and look for dave's killer bread in the bread aisle of your local grocery store time now for our islanders birthday of the day and uh we want to wish a very Happy 57th birthday. The birthday is actually Saturday for former Islanders winger Dale Henry. Henry, a native of Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, an eighth round pick of the Islanders back in 1983, made his Islanders debut during the 1984-85 season and remained with the Islanders through 1989-90 played 132 career games in the NHL, all of them with the Isles, 13 goals, 39 points, 263 penalty minutes, add 14 playoff games. He scored one goal in those games. And look, you know, he went on to a lengthy minor league career, played minor league hockey from 1990 to 2001-2002, even played in 1995 for the Oklahoma Coyotes of Roller Hockey International, where he had 33 points in 24 games and and later went on to coach in some of the minor leagues uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s. So, uh, you know, Henry, one of those guys who stuck around the game a while. Now, we're going to go back and look at one of his memorable moments with the Islanders, March 9th. 1985 at the Nassau Coliseum. The Toronto Maple Leafs come to town to take on the Islanders, and it's Alan Bester getting the start for the Leafs. Billy Smith, the goalie for the New York Islanders, and the Islanders did not waste time scoring just 22 seconds into this game. Tomas Janssen is 14th, the assist to Ken Morrow, and the Islanders had a 1-0 lead. They increased that lead a little more than three minutes later. Roger Kortko, his first from Bob Nystrom and Ken Morrow. Islanders 2 and the Leafs nothing. Three minutes and 34 seconds into the contest. Stu Gavin got Toronto on the board 
Seven and a half minutes into the opening period. His 10th from Dan Dau, I love that name, uh, made it two to one. But then our Islanders' birthday of the day, Dale Henry, his first goal of the season. In fact, his first career NHL goal, Roger Kortko and Ken Morrow with the assist. Three assists already for Ken Morrow in this game. Time of the goal, 1546, and the Islanders led three to one. After 20 minutes, the second period was scoreless, but in the third, Toronto pulled to within a goal. Bill Derlego, his 22nd from Rick Vave and John Anderson at 721, and the Islanders were clinging to a 3-2 lead, but late in the game, the Maple Leafs pull their goaltender, and after the first two goals, uh, Ken Reggett replaced Alan Bester. Reggett comes to the bench John Tonelli pops home an empty netter. His 36, Dennis Potvan with the assist. Final score, Islanders 4 and the Maple Leafs 2. For Dale Henry, our Islanders birthday of the day, one goal. He was a plus one. It was the game-winning goal, and he had two shots on goal. Not only was it the game winner, it was his first, as I mentioned, career NHL goal. Big game for Billy Smith. 39 saves to earn the win. The Islanders were outshot 41 to 35. Mike Bossy led the Islanders with seven shots on goal in this one. And as I mentioned, Ken Morrow had assists on three of the Islanders' four goals. So happy 57th birthday to Dale Henry, an eighth round pick who made good, made the NHL, and and stuck around with the Islanders for about five or six seasons, never really played more than 48 games in a year, never established himself as a full-time NHLer, but was very productive in the minors, a physical hockey player when he wanted to be and needed to be, and uh, a good teammate over the course of his Islanders career. So we wish Dale Henry all the best on this occasion. Sunday, at Madison Square Garden, Islanders and Rangers kicking off the preseason, I for one, Very much looking forward to watching that game. And when we come back on Monday, we will have a a full analysis with some key takeaways from, you know, that game and and, and what it basically told us uh, about things. And we'll also be doing a crossover show with our friends at Locked On Flyers as the Islanders' next preseason game after that is against Philadelphia. So thanks again for making... Locked On Islanders, your first listen every day. We will be back with you on Monday morning uh, to take a look at the the preseason game and do a nice crossover show with our friends at Locked On Flyers. So lots to look forward to over the weekend. And uh, hey, hockey is back. And I don't know uh, what could be better than that. I am so excited for the start of this Islanders season. And betting on the Islanders doesn't have to be a guessing game. When you listen to the Locked On Bets podcast, it's hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. And uh, look, they will help you with any sports wagering you may have. You're going to have all kinds of, of information and promotions and Lee Sterling's lock of the day, wrong team favorite picks, all kinds of things to help you make the most of your sports wagering. So listen to the Locked On Bets podcast wherever you get podcasts. It is sponsored by Locked On, by Bet On, excuse me, by BetOnline.ag. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Stay safe, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. Islanders hockey is back. And of course, let's go Islanders.